All right, everyone on the best behavior. We are recording. <laughs> These recordings will be posted to uh, Tanya's page on the website. Nope. Are we going to open my cell back? Well, we hear you. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start with department income then. Um, zoning fees, as a, um, Kevin was mentioning, we should be increasing when we appoint our fees in March to be comparative with Cortland County. We charge $10 and he's saying that should be more. Um, I did our budget to 250 based on that. Will he Planning. or somebody, will he or somebody present us with a proposed, I mean, we're talking about it now, yep. but we'll forget this in March. No, yeah, he would give it to me. I can actually put it in my calendar to get. Okay. Um, this is the first time I heard it was this year when I started doing zoning and planning mm -hmm. and he came over telling me it was way too low. And I'm like, well, I can't change it right now. So when yeah, you guys, um, when you guys uh, Pat, uh, approve the organizational book, all those fees can be in there. So it can be done in one fell swoop. Okay. Uh, yep. We just need some, a mechanism to remind us because in four yep. months we'll forget. Yeah. I'll put it right in my calendar for our March meeting. And then just give me one second and that will be in. There we go. Um, planning is lower, it is also low. Um, we haven't been earning as much in planning. We get a lot in the building fees. So not as much as planning fees. Community development, I have to go over with Dan after we do all the projects. Cemetery, um, I moved it to 15,000 this year for sale of cemetery lots. And we generally get roughly 30,000 for cemetery services. The fire protection comes to 224-654 for just the funds for Scott and um, Town of Homer, it does not include Summerhill at this point. The youth services from other communities right now only includes Town of Homer. Um, I'm not including Cortlandville. And then um, all the rest are the individual fees um, we talked about at our meeting. But what's going to happen is we would go through each what we're charging the residents and the non residents. Um, and all of those will be approved ahead. And if we have less people, we would have to adjust the expenses accordingly too. Um, and we're gonna be doing that through the rec committee. And then those can go to the board because we'll have to do the budget changes. So those have to go. Interest um, is five, I, for the regular accounts was 500, put 1200 for the reserves. We don't get much off of bingo. So, it, you know, we've been earning a lot lower than it is. So I put the 25, they can't, they don't have everything all the time right now. You'll see the building fees is 3,200. We do get some other small permits. Um, this is our settlement. We don't have as many things I'm told to sell at the auction. So I cut it in half. We always get refunds, so that's where that is. Um, and then 
with, there's always just some other others or every, they're miscellaneous incomes that come in. Usually class action lawsuits are in here. So that's what those are. The Ames Fund is here for the 29315. As you'll see, we got 293 the year before. We also got 29315 the year before that. The mortgage tax, I left at 32,000. The first half of the year is always higher than the second half. We're actually ahead at this point. We have the dam and the salt shed. The chips funds is 105,000. Now, right now that matches the road expenditures, but I sent a question to people today um, if we wanted to pay the whole hot patch, which we could claim off of that for 40 and have the town reimburse us instead. Um, something to think about because we can't claim it through chips if we each own half, but if we buy it and then, then they, we split it, then we could do that. I think that's a great idea. And then what I do is go down to the streets below and I'll just reduce that by 20,000 because 20, we'll get 20,000 from chips and 20,000 from the, well, we'll get 40,000 um, from this and then charge to the town and then we can um, then put our streets back up 20,000. So it would be 85,000. And then our total revenue comes to 31,61,141. So I know this is only preliminary. Anything anyone want to change, go over. No, it looks when we put cool. it all together, we always have lots more comments. Looks good to me. So we'll go over to water. So we've done everything in the water fund. So we can actually look at profit and loss here. The water tank is the debt. So it's, um, we don't get to say this. It's, it pays the, um, the principal and the interest. And so it has no effect. That's the same on the EFC bond on the sewer fund now um, that will be billed to everybody when that starts next year. The metered sales, Right now we're at 248,000. We generally um, bill and it would end up about 307,000 because the next bill is about to come. So I put it up to 310 because of that. And I have another reason I'll tell you after. We have a water connection charges and these are on, they also have to do with some on water, um, some unmetered sales. I've emailed um, Buzz to get the information for Fleet Wash and Burn Dairy. And we also have in here the um, charges where we're going to bill Family Health Network for hooking up their lines and all of that. So all of this goes between these two lines. The penalties, I put at 4,500. Right now we're at 3,235. We'll have charges next month and then when we relevy. Interest I put at 100, we're at 54 right now, and 325 for reserves. And then I'm going to come down here. So I want to show you a couple things in here before we, we still have to do benefits. We'll look at that after. But Ed, I want to show you there's 10,133.99 going into the infrastructure reserves. The water one has reserves each of over 100,000 for um, infrastructure. We also want to put 20,000 towards the van next year. So each of those would go into reserves before zeroing out. And that's where we were here. You're always telling me to put money in reserve, so I wanted to show you. Um, the other thing is, I know you talked about changing rates, but I think there's something we have to do first before we look at rates. Some of the new apartments have to be added. Our code right now is 
uh, and how we're doing it is all the apartments, units, whatever you want to call it, are charged a sewer based on the number of kitchens. Um, all of our newer apartments still are only being charged once. So to, before we even change the code and look at some other rates, I think we need to send someone out there and make sure how many units and adjust it to the same as everybody else. And then we can do an analysis of, and, and this is what I want to do over three to six months, or be, like, it won't take three months, but you know, before the next billing. And we want to figure out the highest consumer. Should we do a commercial rate? Things like that. Should we have um, a lower rate for people that use a lot less? And we can break them up into categories. But before we get there, we everybody should be consistent and then charge that way. But I think we need to send them a letter because they don't, they're being charged once. So. Any thoughts, sir? Just if you're a single person, you know, and you're elderly, I think, you know, lowering that rate for them is not a bad idea. Their usage is yeah. going to be great. Their usage is going to be way. Yeah, see, I, I would love to, to, yeah, alter it so that we 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 charge more based on usage rather than the flat rate. Just for we that even reason. can have a commercial rate. I know we've talked about it in the office that some yeah, of the places, good. yeah, have more. So um, it, based on huge use, so we can actually do all that. We can explore all of our files into Excel and then they can be worked on that way. And honestly, it was one of the projects we're possibly looking at if people have to work at home in COVID anyway. Right, so the commercial rate will be much lower, right? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I just think we um, need to get the number of apartments in some of the new buildings and then put them online with everybody else. We can send them a letter before we do it. And then, um, then we can adjust everyone at once because then everyone like look at everything at once because then everybody would be on the same apples to apples thing. Okay. Yeah, but the first thing is so everybody you, do the same apples to apples part. Right. Yeah. So I can work with Donna and Kevin and Buzz on getting that with the newer buildings and everything. So we come to the sewer fund then. And the first thing is just like there used to be a levy for the phase two sewer, there would be one for the new project at, and it's 32,000 a year. This was paid to ESC just like this would be. Um, sewer rent is here. Um, you'll see it was 498 last year that it ended. We budgeted 541. Um, right now we still have another billing to do. So we're looking at ending there. Penalties were I put at 4,500, this is this year. The sewer services to other governments, we're currently at 50,342.80. Um, Monday, we're billing the school at the rates we discussed because of them being closed, but there's also another billing to Cortlandville, and remember they're at the higher rates. All of that came through before, um, after our budget was approved last year. So we're probably going to end between 70 and 73,000. You'll see we're at 53,4280. That's why I moved this to 70. Once we figure out the bill Monday for the school, we'll already put in the next adjustment at the board meeting. And then um, as we're looking at Cortlandville's, what last year's January um, billing was, it does, you can't bill it till we get these bills, but at least then we can do an estimate it's definitely too low as you see. And then that money, um, we can either not take from fund balance for a couple of things we were going to, we can put into reserves, um, we can put it towards the band we're talking about, any of those, whatever the board chooses. Interest in earnings is 100 each. So, they're still looking at the blacktop. I don't know if we had reserves here yet. 
Yeah, I'm still have to find 1789. Um, so I don't have anything in reserves, and we'd either have to adjust rates or adjust expenses in our next meeting um, to make this zero. And Buzz is still looking for his rooftop quote for that. But it's a lot closer here, and we're down to um, being where we have to come up with only 1789. However, nothing is put in reserve. I'm still, I'm not saying we shouldn't do a rate increase. I still think we should do the analysis first and do it at three months if we do do it. Great. I'd like to see the results of the analysis before we raise rates. Yeah, ditto. So I see you're, we're all here. So I'm going to go into personnel. We'll come back to this. This is a very fun schedule. Gotta make it bigger, huh? Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> so gotta, uh, I will. It's pretty large. So this year, it, I dug into the details of everybody's department and everything. And I got lots of questions what answered that I called them on and days and every single thing that I could come up with. This will just take another minute. One more department. So one of the things with this is if there's increases or not, that will go over later. I've heard everything from we should to not at all to the COLA amount to 2%. So I actually started at the one and most of this is at 1%. And anything can be changed pretty easy once I know what we're doing. And we might not even know today. I'm going to start with the easier department. This is the police. Um, the SROs, the pass-throughs, they're all charged, they're all paid $33,500. And when you go across, you'll see they're under the SRO column. One of the things I wanted to do when we put out our budget, for, especially for the police, is I want to break them into categories because this big 500 and something thousand scares the residents. It's like, oh my God, we're spending so much. Well, part of it is because we have SROs that are fully reimbursable. 
So letting them see that total separate makes them see more how it's spent. And with all the, um, as we're supposed to have three public hearings, that would also help Bob. So in all of our part-time officers, um, we generally spend about 47 and a half. With an increase, it would go to 49.1, and that's actually there under officers. Overtime is has been, other than this year, roughly 11,000. It was 11.3. I talked to Bob, and we moved it to 11.5. Um, I was going over these with his so with him, so he saw what these really were. Then what happens is we give the crossing guards one whole day off. So that comes up to $315. And our three crossing guards, the amount is based on the hours. This one works 3.75 hours a day, this one one and a half, and this one three. Um, that actually comes to $20,207. We have a, clean, a person that does cleaning, and that's the $1,607. In the end, the whole department is 519 486 Three, but I wanted to break them up when we issue our um, proposed budget in this manner. Um, a couple of things we might combine, but I wanted like at least the SROs separate and uh, list them as Bob wants them as we go over it. The water and sewer department's pretty easy. Tanya, on the police where department, where was... Uh don't we have a secretary there? Yep, that's Kim Rotano. She's right here, 32, 646, 43. I'm sorry, I probably didn't say it. Oh, I, I probably stopped talking after the crossing guards. Okay. Um, so we actually had some more. So we have some officers. Um, all of this is a 1% increase. And Michael Winchell is new. It's There's no increase because he's just starting. And you'll see it's here. Bob plans for him to work 1,040 hours. All the rest are at 1%. And then I actually separated the office for the police department here at 30, and that's the 32-6. Okay. I was so excited. I was at the back of my columns, I forgot. So then we go to water and sewer. And everybody's salary here is split in half. So Buzz, um, he's paid from both funds, the water and sewer fund. He makes 68,000. And you'll see the total here. Pump duty, the guys get $100 a day. They test the water in the morning and at night and also answer to any calls during the day. Um, it generally amounts to 17,000 a year. It's every Saturday and Sunday, any holiday, but also any time um, buzz is off. Overtime in water generally ends up about 3,500 in water and sewer, so it's split. Then there's Devin and Keith's salary. And that would be our water department. The next is recreation. Right now, <coughs> there at the end. So I have Tammy at 2,500. She gets 75 a day, non-summer, and the stipend was 2,000 for the summer. And then um, Zach ends up getting. Zach is a question here. If I come up with a 46, 9, 40, 40, and we did a 1%, he's not, you'll see here, he can't be exempt. So we have a choice of having him exempt and moving him to 48, 750 or hourly at 47, 409, 80. If he isn't, if the rec isn't open, which is what I planned, I have his other half in IT. So we would do the budget with him, hoping he opens at rest, but anytime he's not, we would have other duties and do budget adjustments, bringing it to IT. 
which makes the most sense. <clears throat> well, I think we should get him up to where he's exempt because if not, you won't have to work all that much overtime to blow right past it anyway. Yeah, it's about right. a thousand under, so yeah. So that's why I have to be honest, I use the exempt rate and put him there and that's what he's at now. Well, he's at this, but that's what it would be. So that is the recreation department. All other employees at this point, they're not really gonna be employees anymore. He's using the Cortland Youth Bureau. So we don't have to ha hire anyone to go run games or anything. The next is the office. Um, hey, it real, starts real, with- Before you move on to the next one. Right now, water department's got a, a part-timer, right? Yeah, and January 31st. Okay. And he hasn't mentioned anything about trying to keep him on, correct? Um, he's going to college, so it wouldn't be him. If he wants to keep someone, we would schedule someone in and he'd have to hire someone. Okay. I just and then we to would sure. budget it. No, I just want to make sure this we weren't missing something, that's all. Yeah, no, he's supposed to go to college and he ends January 31st and he was only extended to put in the water meters and they say they're almost done. Okay, thank you. So in the general department, it starts off with Lindsay as the dog catcher. And that's separate here under dog. <laughs> and then the farmer's market, I put in at 75 a day, like Tammy's paid, it would be the setup or we do a stipend for the whole thing for someone. Um, Cause there also is training. I actually counted how many days there normally is, which is 20 between the Wednesdays and Saturdays. That's where I came up with this rate and kind of used Tammy's. Um, Cause we pay her 75 for doing um, all the arts and crafts. But this would be about the same time frame on Wednesday nights and Saturday mornings. But the person also has to get certified and there's um, other setups like insurance and stuff. So if it's a regular employee, it would be a stipend to do that. And then now, I'm- I, I don't sorry. mean to interrupt, but <clears throat> could, could we use Zach as an interim for the uh, farmer's market? We could, but if there's sports going on, it might be hard to do it because it's Wednesday nights and he might be there in Saturdays. I, I actually talked to him about getting certified anyway, because then he would get certified and then he could just, somebody else could set up and run it. The same person certified doesn't have to run it. They just have to manage the person. So I was um, wondering, uh, basically, if, if sports didn't produce and we, we couldn't use them for that, then could we use them for that? for the uh, farmer's market instead and allocate that money toward that. We could definitely, he actually was wholeheartedly ready to do that. Cause that's what things I brought up. Um, but some of this goes all August and I just don't know if what's going to happen. Okay. So I put the 1500 in, but yes, um, honest truth is this used to be in the rec department. And so I actually went to Zach before we had our meeting for him to do other things. And this is the first thing I mentioned for him to do. And he mm -hmm. was all set to um, at least become certified because then we could open. And, it, and part of that is learning how to process the farmer's market checks. And he could show anybody else too, even so he could do that in the off season anyway. And then if somebody say sports happen, somebody else can go and do that part. And, and obviously my thought process is, is if we're still paying Zach his full rate, but he can't do his duties for the games because the games are upheld, then he can transfer this over energy over into that sector. Yep. Oh yeah. He, and he was, like I said, he was all happy to do that. Very good. And then this, this money would just go to something else. I have mine. Um, and I, I'm split between the spring and winter streets because I do work for them. Most of mine is clerk treasurer. Not going. Okay, we'll use this. 
And then I have time in the water and sewer because I do all the bills now for the individual accounts and I have some for rec. Dan is here. Um, he has a percentage at clerk treasurer. And then most of his is in grants. He also has some in water and sewer because he manages the project, um, like the sewer project. So Nick right now is the fire inspector and without having the trainings, his expires, excuse me, December 31st. We talked about John Daniels taking over as a sub when he comes back in April, but he would be appointed in January. He also would help in the fire inspection. That normally cost about 6,000. Um, and then that is put right here under codes and fire, his would be under the fire inspector somewhere right there. He also would be the total backup for Kevin because so Kevin could be off in the summer and that's when, because he's doing other places now, his busy time is the summer and John can pick up some. Donna is next. She helps a lot in streets. So hers is split there um, along with clerk treasurer. And then Kevin is coach and his main codes is here. Kathy is in clerk treasurer cemetery. She's the one who's helping build the cemetery and process the deeds now. And then water and sewer because she does all the census meters and stuff like that. Dante, um, well, he goes to law. Ah, that's right here. All of you guys, trustees are here, all, all four, and Hal is here at 18. And then Marty, the historian, is here. And that is the whole, like, general department. The next one up here is our cleaner, Martin. And it goes right to the fire department. He gets up to 35 hours every two weeks. He also, besides cleaning, does a lot of other projects they need. I'm gonna skip CPW because we had a bunch to talk about there. I'm gonna go to cemetery and that leads into DPW. So we're gonna start with Michael Ellis. So I talked to Jim and to let you guys know, see if I can, the cemetery is going to be open 33 weeks, March 29th um, to no, roughly November 15th. So Mike Ellis would be here for those weeks and he's totally only in the cemetery. Ken and Joe work in during the cemetery hours in the cemetery and then they go to DPW. So you'll see they're here for 33 weeks like Mike Ellis. The overtime that's been paid the last couple years, it did go down this year because of how we do overtime. Um, so talking to Jim and what it comes up to is roughly 1600 a year. And I'm breaking overtime up for every department as you see, so we'll have separate codes and can see it all the time. Jim said he wanted to retire at the end of June. Um, so that puts him out for eight weeks from when it opens and that's how much it would be. From that, we would need to get a trainee. We cannot hire two cemetery sextons at once. One would have to be either a laborer or an MEO starting and that's what that is. And then I'm working with, um, Rusty to try to come up with a rate for somebody who doesn't have as many years as Jim Tulin. Most of the cemetery sextons we're finding are actually paid around $15. So the problem with that is if you're going to get anyone good as a manager. So I, I'm kind of playing around with different rates. I don't know what you guys would like to use. So I started at the sextant, the cemetery sextant here. 
one of our thoughts was to have the person full time with a CDL and going over to DPW after in the winter and plowing. And they would be under the um, DPW superintendent and working foreman. So they would have to know that if we made them full time. So that's where that would be. And the weeks that come out left are here. And that's what this says. That was our plan last year. So I kind of just kind of rolled with that going in. So before we go on to um, DPW any further, is there any questions in the cemetery? Okay, so then I'm gonna go back to DPW. DPW right now, Nick's at 19. This is the 1%. Um, we did an agreement last year. If he did more ASCs, if we offer it to him, he'd get another dollar at that time. Um, if we want to continue that and send him, then we would do that before any increase. He's split between spring and winter, and they're all on mechanics heavy equipment at ASEs. The overtime in the DPW is generally, actually it used to be more, and once we started the policy of it's not calculated until after work hours, it comes to roughly 12, 126, 47. Amnesty Day, um, they always schedule as overtime. They don't cut people during the week. So it ends up being $432. There's a spring and a winter. Park duty, Mike asked this rate to be reviewed. So what happens is they get $85 a day for picking up garbage, being on call for each of the parks. Um, it comes up to $28.90, so all in, that's the park duty. And then we usually have extras on special events like the field days, um, any others that are assigned, and that's what this is. When they um, did paving or vacations, they had some subs in the spring. And then I broke up all the people based on time, so Ken, um, I listed if they have licenses or not, because we talked about that. I should have mentioned Nix. So Nix has a CDL. He's the only one with an A. Um, he's an MEO, and he's also a certified trainer. Ken, as we get to here, he doesn't have a license. In the winter, he comes over from cemetery. They, him and Joe normally do the sidewalks and they can drive the Ventrax, the Bobcat, any of those, because you don't need a license for those. Um, Joe has a driver's license. And so their winter time is here if the week's not at um, the cemetery. And if you remember, we were paying almost the whole thing in unemployment, and that's why we brought them into work, because it was only a couple thousand dollars to have them work. So we got work for it, and we were paying anyway. Carl is a sub that generally works in the spring. He has a CDL license, and his rate, he, how much we pay him is roughly 76, 88, 63. He works 29 hours a week and gets no benefits. Fred is full-time. He has a driver's license only. Um, with the 1%, he'd get 29, 831, 26. And I just, they're all split between winter and spring. Can you? Um, how? When does the uh, minimum wage increase go into effect and how much is it for 2021? It's, it's December 31st and it's the 1225 that's here. So it's all based on that. Okay, thank so we, you. We approved that a few weeks ago. Yep. So um, Fred does do a lot of mowing, um, but other than that, I, I know he drives some other things picking up garbage, but there's no other driving that I know he does. Paul, um, he has a driver's license. They've asked him to get his CDL, but he hasn't passed the permit test yet. Um, and his is split between spring and winter. Mike Galliotti has a CDL. Um, I also should have put this. He has a water license, it's a, a C. 
I'm sorry, he has a B. And um, he's the only HEO. Um, and his rate is here because an ATO is higher and that his rate splits. Mike Carter has a CDL and a C and there is his here. Um, McCory, he also has a CDL. He, he's one of the plow drivers and his is split in winter and spring. Kevin is a CDL, he's an MEO. He drives the plow, and I'm told he's retiring in June. Um, Phil has a CDL. He's the working foreman title, and he has a water class B license. And that is our DBW. So you'll see our plow drivers are generally Galeotti, um, McCory, Kevin Reese, and um, Phil, Nick, and Mike do with when they're needed. And if we had a really bad storm and people are sick, Carl Cole can be called in. He's appointed every year for that. So I know we were gonna talk about staffing. All right, I just lost so, everybody for a few minutes. What I, <laughs> we were talking about uh, Kevin Reese. I'm told Kevin Reese is retiring in June. Okay. Um, he drives the plow. Um, originally, Paul was supposed to take over for him, but he has not passed his CDL. Um, and then Phil is after him. You'll see he has a CDL working foreman. He also has the water class B. Um, and we, so I've been told Kevin's retiring in June. And then I knew we were talking about license, um, staffing, but what I was saying is um, Kevin, uh, McCory, Galeotti are the general plow drivers. Um, Phil, Nick, and Mike switch on and off based on work. Like if trucks have to be fixed, then Phil drives. If, you know, it goes like that. Um, and then as a backup that can be called in in plow time is Carl. Now, something I do want to point out, when you come to the water department, every one of them have a CDO, Buzz, Devin, and Keith. They can be called in for plowing. In fact, that used to be the practice before there were so many people. Um, and if they're doing pump duty for a day, they can plow and still get both because the two duties aren't at the same time and they don't interfere. If they're called and asked to plow while they're testing, they just go back and plow and then come back and finish whatever testing the state requires. Is Paul gonna make um, an effort to, to get his CDL or he just want to? He hasn't passed the permit. He took it twice this year and I don't know if he's been told to, he, he signed a thing that he would get a raise if he took it and passed but he hasn't passed. Um, and I know he didn't pass last year either. Hmm. It, would be, it would be nice if he could so we don't have to draw from water. No. Whatever. Yeah, and that would be, that was a secession plan, but without that, do we need as many laborers or do we need more CDL? One of the things that Buzz told me as he ran both departments is it was, it used to be a requirement listed into the laborer's position. Each of these laborers, other than Ken and Joe, which they're not like permanent there, they were brought over to do sidewalks, um, were basically hired before and that wasn't put in in their hiring. So that's one thing Buzz set told me that he, he required when he was the director, the department head over at Street. Oh, it makes sense. Because otherwise, yeah, and it's usually the county requires that you can be hired as a laborer without it, and you have one year to get your CDL, or you're you're done. So, so I, I would like to propose the idea of cutting some of the workforce needs in the DPW, and if we needed filler inners, we could use the water department because they're already fully qualified. Yeah, I mean. Going back to the way that that uh, was discussed, where you know if you're on uh, 
weekend water duty, you can plow as well, or weekend park duty, you can plow as well. Yep. Makes sense. You get paid for both. You get paid. You, you would get. You get paid double. Because you're duty. doing. You're not really doing oh. double duty. So if you're plowing for four hours, you would get paid the four hours for plowing. You'd still get paid for your testing in the morning and at night. Got it. So you All still right. have to do it twice. So, so it would not be there. double dipping. Right. Right. That would, Tanya? Yep, it wouldn't be. Um, okay. I actually called Buzz on that today to give you guys a heads up because that was Mike's concern. Um, and why he told me he doesn't usually call them in um, because he's concerned it would be but they can't do the work at the same time. So they're getting paid to come in and test morning and night and that they're still getting. And if something broke in someone's house or the pumps got, you know, filled or froze, they still have to do that. But if they were asked to plow in the middle, they can still plow and get paid. I, I, I personally would rather the DPW prove to me after cutting a couple positions that they can't complete the work needed to be done. Um, because I, I, for one, I, I feel that there's enough outside information from constituents that we're too overstaffed in that department. And if we can cut, say maybe two positions and still cover everything that's necessary, then why wouldn't we do I think we lost everybody. Oh, wait, you're back. No, we're here. I, I mean, I, yeah, we, we are going to have to take a hard look at the staffing. I know that. I, and we have a choice of do you want to not bring the people over from cemetery? Do you want to cut from within there, like not just in the winter, but like year round? Personally, my stance is that I would like to see us make the necessary cuts and let's get proven that we're wrong because it just seems that I, I'm being questioned on how many people we're employing to do tasks that we used to do in the past with much less staff. Does it make yeah. any sense not to bring the cemetery guys over since we'd pay uh, unemployment yeah, anyway? Yeah. So, but we're going to continue. pay unemployment. Yeah. We're going to pay unemployment for whoever leaves, just so you know. Oh. I chatted well, one two, year though. Job, yeah. My chatted two dudes yeah. in Coolidge should probably go. So, and and, and uh, uh, not that I'm just looking to cut people or anything crazy like that, but I have to agree with Dan's position that that both the Coolidges might be on the chopping block. I think part of this we have to make sure that when we hire people, we have to add in that CDL issue again. Well, what the fact is, is that we added that provision too late. It, it got past those those two. Right, it got past um, those yeah. two, but for the future. So going forward now, I think we're in a position where they have to attain that CDL and would be much more of a, a benefit to the village as an employee uh, having the CDL going forward. Right. Yep. And I, I'm not one to normally call for cuts to staffing because I'm all about employing people obviously with my trade but but in this circumstance I keep taking a hard look at it and I keep taking a look at what I'm being told from the outside public and it just makes sense to me um, so this is this is definitely my position is to cut staff. Timmy I'm in the same boat with you but we got to be careful if we do that we don't get too much bitching because things aren't done you know, properly. And that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, so I, I would rather make the cuts and make the, the public prove me wrong at this point. We do yeah, have so the ability to compensate. We can always add later. Right. Yep. The, um, we can't, there's no mandatory retirement age, is there? Negative. No, one of the options we could do is pull Mike in with Phil or and then talk to the whole department and say we are going to make cuts we could say something like maybe we give like an extra couple thousand dollars to someone who retires you can kind of push people 
and give them a week to decide before we decide who is gone. Because we have at least one person on that list who is definitely above retirement age. Um, we have a few. Um, have more than one. Brad has already yeah. retired. Um, Kevin Reese has already retired elsewhere. Mike Carter can retire. Galliotti can retire. Yeah, well, we don't want some of these guys. Some of them we don't want to retire. No. <laughs> we <have to laughs> but right. we know Kevin's retiring. He could retire and come in as a sub. Um, we also have been told at different times, Harder's retiring. You never know what would happen after that. Yeah. But those two are the ones that have CDLs. I think we need to take a hard look at uh, at least uh, Fred Coolidge. Uh, yeah. About his uh, about our retirement package and see something there. He just joined the retirement system, just to let you know, so he won't get much out of it. No. He's re he does get social security somewhere else and other things, but, um, that's okay. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. So the choice is if we are looking at a permanent one, the one that was hired last is Paul. Right. Cause we, yeah, you kind of go in order right. before that was Fred. So that would make sense on these two. If you're looking at temporary ones, you have these two um, here. We can or don't have to bring him in all winter, but he does have a CDL if people get sick. Um, and then we still have the person up here, the trainee from cemetery. If we're going to cut laborers, my suggestion for the trainee from cemetery is going to be to hire someone that's the equivalent of an MEO instead of a laborer because they would have to have a CDO. And that's what we're requiring for that position. And you can't really cut a laborer just to bring in another laborer. Right. So. Makes sense. Do you want me to run the numbers without them? I, I would like to see the numbers with them without. This will be one second. Can you see this after I changed it? The screen still? We can see the screen. I'm just not sure that if we see the okay. changes yet. Yep. So this one here, it comes down to 122 and 121 for spring and fall. And then I have to come back and re get the other one. And if you come down here, oh wait. I'm only gonna fix those two lines so you can see them bigger. You'll see it was 152 and 151. So coming from here, it's roughly $60,000 in savings. Plus that will also save in FICA and Medicare. So if you have roughly 60, that's roughly another 4,600. So it's 6,600 that's saved there from those cuts.
Well, I'm liking that. My question comes then on the park duty. I'm just going to bring this up because they didn't have specific days for this. I presume we want them approved before they add extra people because they're just saying whatever events. The only one I knew of was the field day. Can't we put in language specific to those for those duties? Oh, yeah, we can anytime. And they could have to re approve them at department head meetings. Yeah, I think we And have to send them. Yeah. I think so, we need pre, pre, prior approval before they do it. it exactly, because we, we know when these events are going to occur generally. So yeah. uh, there's no reason why we can't make the approval beforehand. All overtime is required to be approved by the superintendent and we can require as a superintendent, um, you know, their work to have it approved by HAL or PAC because they're technically the head of the department. Um, so any other thoughts or changes? Do you want these guys here all winter or do you want them not here for a little bit or uh i mean when we figured it up the difference between bringing them in and and having them on an employment it made sense just to bring them in if i recall yeah so i would yeah. say just bring them in yeah and they're the ones that uh, which one drives the vent track those two guys yeah both, and, both and, right? and, and yep. we don't want to waste a cdl driver driving a vent track. <laughs> Really? The no, reason and, I'm and bringing both, that both. I'm sorry, Tina. Oh, well, the reason I was bringing it up is the main driver of the vent track is Paul. Right. But, so but that's both why I was Ken saying. and Joe are fully capable of operating it, correct? I think so. I'd have to ask Mike. I mean, if, if, if both of those two are fully capable of operating the vent track, then well, why do we need the other two for sure? Because one of the two, one of the, one of the three, and I don't know which one is not the best driver of things, but I yeah. can't remember which one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not positive either, but I do recall Paul's already made some errors with it, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So we know Paul has already made, and he's one of the main drivers. <laughs> So I think if we put a little bit more attention to Kenny and Joe as to how to operate this thing and, and mitigate those, uh, you know, we're no better or worse than we were before. Right. I'm pretty sure I could drive it. I, I know yeah. I could. I know I could. <laughs> I probably can't. <laughs> it's, it's not that difficult. No. Okay. So I, I actually asked him um, just to see. But I didn't say any of this stuff. I just said who can drive it besides any non CDL. I mean, so do we ask Kenny or Joe who is more interested or? Well, what did Mike say? Oh, I'm waiting for an answer. He'll eventually text me. Okay. Um, so we can, is there any other changes? And then we can do the benefits and maybe I'll get an answer. Yeah. So Still not entirely sure about any sort of salary increase this year, so it's something new. Yeah, we can change that anytime, and I can run it through. It'll only take me half an hour through the whole schedule. So we're looking at we've I got mean, eight full-time folks on streets and parks, and three part-time. Eight full-time, three part-time. Am I reading that right? One, two. Oh, right now. So one, two, three, four, five. Yes. And then um, we have three part time here. And then um, we've had others if they need help. So and we're going to have another part time next year with the 
if we hire someone year round from cemetery. And that person we're requiring to hire with the CDL. No doubt. So we've got yeah, that one time, get training. So we've got full time, part time, and subs. Yep. Yeah, I can so. That's kind of the that's the ideal setup. And where's our pay? And we just pay our what do we pay our subs? Twelve twenty five minimum. Okay. So whatever it is per hour. The minimum wage threshold, correct? Yep. Yep. We moved it um, to meet that. And um, we have CDL drivers that come in for that right. Okay. So. Yep. Yeah, I've heard many different things on increases or not. So I just honestly took the middle ground of everything I heard. Um, okay. It's pretty easy, like I said, to run it through. It would take me half an hour to run it through and put it in on the schedule. Um, I've actually formulated the bottom. So any changes will just fall right down here. So it, it doesn't matter. So um, how about we go to benefits? Good. Let's go. Okay, so we did enrollment for health insurance, um, vision, and dental. And I'm going to blow it up. I just got here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I broke them up between, so the employees are on the left and then the, the it's either family or single. The amount due from the village is here and I broke it up into the funds based on how they're paid. So the general funds 88,347, water fund is 23,305. This is for health insurance. Everybody else either denied it or has health insurance elsewhere. Then you go to vision. I threw in a percentage every year we say we'll look at it. Right now, the vision and dental are totally 100% paid and any decision wouldn't be till after we combine our budget anyway. So I wanted it set up here. This is vision and the people that signed up and I threw a 20% just to get a basis. We could fill in whatever percentage we want and it will calculate the village cost at the bottom. And then dental, again, is the same way. Format cells. So again, this is 100% employee paid. I threw the same percentage for dental. This is how much it would cost the village for the whole year. It's kind of interesting. The dental insurance changes July 1st, and so that's why you see two rates. So family is here for January to June and July to December. They're on a fiscal year. So all our forms were set where they had to approve, approve their withholdings that and increases mid-year. So roughly it's costing $8,700 a year? Yep, to the employees. And so the employees. if the village pays- What, what is our yeah, cost? The, the zero, it's 100% employee paid. And okay. every year we say, we'll look at it. So I just, either way, we, we have, you have to know we have an employee paid one. And then I just threw a percentage here and we can change that to anything and we can have a zero. Um, but that way there's an option that I always put up. And if the village pays anything, then we put that on. So I put it at 20% to start just to see. And none of that is decided. So we put the whole thing together anyway. 
Well, I, I just want to throw out there, if, if, if we're honestly toying with the idea of no increase to the wages, then I, yeah. I feel we should at least make some sort of increase toward their benefits. Well, the problem with that is um, so few people take yeah. the benefits. You're not well, really... right. True, and true, we, but, uh, but maybe that encourages folks to use it. I, I, I don't know, but. To give you a heads up, the village pays a large share of the health insurance and larger than many place, many employers. So the village pays 75% and the same thing for family. So um, not saying that people wouldn't enjoy, appreciate that, but that could be very expensive. Um, that could be more than increases. And that even though it would be for less people. Um, if it's just the vision and dental, it's not that much money. And you can even do a small percentage. But if it adds a percentage of increasing healthcare coverage, that could be extremely expensive because this is already at 75%. I know where you're coming from, Timmy, because you're a union man, but we got to be- Yeah, clear. I, I know. And it just, it, 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 it beats me to my core to think to not give any kind of an increase for- I, I, I agree. I mean, we uh, also every, gave a lot of. Hard, we also could look at it mid year. One of the other options is a small bonus instead, doing like a three hundred dollars to everybody, and say this is a hard year. This is what we're going to do. Remember, um, that's also, another option. As Tanya was starting to say, we also brought we brought everybody up pretty far pretty fast in the last couple of years yes we did yes we yeah, did okay yeah no yep. fair enough fair enough yeah and one thing if people do complain understand we allow working at home and flexible hours mm -hmm. and with covid we're more flexible than most we try to keep people on before even doing layoffs well, I, I or, understandable I, I know we're, we're not like a lot of them that that are a lot more strict I get it. I'm uh, going to come here. And again, we can decide a lot of that after anyway. So as part of benefits, other that we do have other benefits. The state retirement here is 15,000 next year. We're planning in water and sewer. Social security is totally based on the wages. Um, this will go down a little if we don't do any increases. It's 0 0.062 and 0 0.00145 for Medicare. Workers comp is set by Comp Alliance. So that comes right from there. We also have unemployment insurance, and if people do become unemployed, that will be an expense. Disability insurance is um, basically in a prepaid status at this point. And then this is the amount from the medical from the calculations for the sewer fund. Water fund has the same ones. Um, Sorry, your faces are right over my screen there. Um, the state retirement here, Social Security, again, would go down a little. Medicare, workers' comp, again, is based on percentages of people working. Um, and we have the medical insurance. And actually, I found this today. We have zero due next year for disability. Okay. And then we go to the general funds. Retirement is here. It goes back down because we paid for all of the ones to add back on. And we also allocate some to water and sewer. There's the police. The Social Security um, will go down once I take off. It will go down another basically 4500 here for Medicare. Workers' comp came from Comp Alliance. The payouts are the ones that we do for um, CORA. Doug Hollenbeck, 
um, in any of the medical expenses or a legal expense. For instance, they go and check they're still alive and that it's an existing claim. That happens once every couple of years. Unemployment insurance. Um, and then actually this will be zero because I have that today. And then the medical insurance came from the spreadsheet. So that's the cost of the benefits. Um, so I have a couple others if you have, a, if you want to do them now or we can do them at the next meeting. Let's do them now. Let's do it now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, ones that I do, or at least set up are like the trustees. Um, left the, the salary came from the spreadsheets. The medical reimbursement is here. We have a trustee training and other contractual. And then we go down to, you'll see a lot of this is unspent this year and we are going to adjust some of this to the legal fees based on what's not being used. Good idea. We, we plug holes with anything not used. Um, we have the mayor is next. Um, this is the actual salary, the equipment line. Um, we increase this we, with the um, equipment bought. We have spent zero on mileage and travel and training. Um, and then, so if you have something coming up, let me know or we can look at something else. The clerk treasurer, the, the um, salary came from the spreadsheet. The equipment, we've been, we um, change a couple computers a year. We pay rent. This is our IT. I took this off because we don't, we're not paying anything um, unless somebody knows of something coming up in professional fees. This is the internet, the software licenses that's like Williamson, all of that. Advertising, I left the same. We do, it's mostly the radio station and some of the ads. We have training, office supplies, copies, and printing, postage, shredding. Um, January, we have to call and have them come and shred the past year's boxes that are, we have to do that once a year. We have some COVID expenses. A lot of this will be allocated out soon. Some filings and permits we do, and then we have some other costs. The telephone is here. The legal fees, um, the salary came from the spreadsheet, and then we, I put an amount into the other contractual. Each of these should be done next year. And then we'll plug, you'll see there's some differences. The fire department, I'm working with them to allocate some at the next budget meeting to this. And then some of the others above would come here. And, oh, sorry, I missed the insurance. Um, the unallocated insurance. So we're planning 60,000 next year. And then the fire insurance is 39,697. That covers all their benefits. The dog per person, the um, salaries came from our spreadsheet. There's fuel monthly, and then there's some expenses that come in here and there. And we didn't change anything with that contract, correct? No. You see, it's actually an employee. Yeah. So right. we haven't. Yeah. So yep. this one here, we have to change to 85 because we're only going to have 85,000 because 20,000 is going to be for the hot patch because we're going to claim 40 and get 20 from the town. This one is the dam and um, salt shed. And that was our cost from the grant that was going to be cash and not non-cash.
the historian is here. Here's his salary, and there's always 500 in contractual. Um, for two years, he didn't spend it all. Last year, he did because we got him a computer. Um, basically, it comes on needs for the year. So any year we don't, we end up reclassing that back or it goes to the general fund. The awards I wanted to talk to you about, I do want to keep it at 2000. In, in the ref budget, there were two things cut. We should talk about those if we want them to be cut. They were for 500 each for, I think, Winterfest and Holiday for Homer. Um, the minute the flowers were cut, I had tons of calls from the Homer Business Association. I'm not saying we don't cut them, but do we want to take them from here instead of recreation? And then it shows the stuff we're still doing with the community. Good question. Yeah, I, I, that's a good question. And, and if we, even if it's not a rec thing, I'm sure Zach would hire the person but the expense technically wouldn't be out of recreation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where people were getting at with it. We still should have some say on like, if we hire a puppet person or the snake person or whatever it is. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm wondering the backlash from that. Cause I can't tell you how many calls I got from the flowers just cause they misunderstood and thought we were cutting it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, we need to keep it, and it's good to, to have it broken out so that the public can see that we are keeping it, so. Okay. I just threw the note in there for us. I left the 1000 for the programs for aging. We haven't spent that this year, and I'm wondering, um, is there any place doing, like, breakfast? or something or dinners for seniors and that we could work with them to do like a Christmas dinner or something. I mean, Kevin mm -hmm. has a restaurant. <laughs> There's more do. on wheels too. For, for now, for now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do we want to just do a contribution to Homer residents or set a day for them or something? Uh, Cause we made such a big deal of saying we were doing something and the, cause the county was cutting it and cutting a day and we haven't done anything. I brought this to Zach a few times, but and if we did a meal thing, he would offer to deliver too. Well, but I don't think anyone knows what to do. Yeah, I would be more inclined just to donate it to Meals on Wheels. That's a good and idea, Hal. It's just uh, a logistical kind of a nightmare to try to figure out how to do it ourselves. Yeah, through, through, yeah. through all the restrictions, it's hard to navigate all that. And I uh, I agree. Donated to Meals on Wheels. At least they're already established and can do everything. Okay, so I'll throw that on the next agenda, and I'll talk to them this week on getting um, something to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, they might be able to earmark it towards people that live in the village. It, it, like right. There you go. Right? Yeah, I'm liking that. Yep. Okay, um, codes. Kevin's salary and the fire inspector come from um, our spreadsheet. The equipment has to be reduced by how much is spent. Um, at that point, I was at 14.5. I know we just got another bill, so that's why that is colored and the rest of it isn't. So that's going to lower a little. We and in codes, we have other expenses. Um, there's Joan. Some of these things. Um, there's IT in there for Williamson and billing and working on computers. There, <laughs> there's advertising for meetings. <laughs> the one large expense we don't need as high is the 3,600 for meeting expenses. At this point, unless you want to go back and offer them to pay $50 for the chair and 25 for the members. This we took away last year or this year, when um, the chairs didn't want to deal with it. They didn't want to be paid. Um, and then they had never gotten forms either. So the board voted to not do it because it was mostly Tim and Malin before we even got anywhere else that didn't want it. Um, and it, because you have to be employees. 
And if we're going to do it, we have to give them paperwork ahead because we have to get it all. So right now I'm not hearing complaints. I don't know what you guys are, but it's more of what you guys want to do. I haven't heard any complaints, but I did probably definitely promise Paula Harrington that she would get paid, but uh, she would probably be pretty understa understanding if you know, we said we cut that for right now and we're gonna revisit in the future. And if no one else is complaining, then I guess it's not a big deal. I mean, I, I think being able to do the meetings remotely uh, takes a lot of uh -huh. stress off of people. No, definitely. Okay. The phone is to Kevin. And then we have planning expenses. Um, <laughs> municipal lot we did with Mike, and he said if there's any paving in that, that will come, we could actually use chips money. The 5,000 for the flowers is here and the 60,000 for the trees. Um, Dan, this is Dan for community development personnel we, and the farmer's market. I put the 1500 here. Obviously, if sports are happening, we can get rid of it. Then we have some contractual for normal things. Um, and this is how much we planned for farmer's market last year, community gardens, and then normal utilities and stuff for the Little White Church that doesn't come from the CDBG fund. And that's it. What what would be the repercussion of not uh, allocating money for shade trees for one year only? Would we be hurting we anything? We uh, would we, just save sixty thousand, but I would put like ten thousand minimum or something. I think we for emergency. I mean, I think we've got an abundance that need to come down that we're not even able to take them all down. So, and that's uh, why I'm wondering why wouldn't we want to try to save that money for just one year and then restart the program next year? Well, because we the, uh, currently it's bro it's not broken down. Shade trees covers taking down the trees. Yeah, as that well. covers removal. Yeah. Oh, that also covers removal. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My bad. I I thought that was only the ones we're purchasing to plant. Oh no. Nope. Okay. Okay. The removal Temporary. is the main cost. Nope, ten four, ten four. I get him. Yep. So no that's problem, all sir. I have. Uh, anything else, guys? Any thoughts, comments, questions, concerns? How does everybody feel about reducing staff? Reducing what? Staff in the DPW area. As long as we don't cut ourselves short and so people start bitching because things don't get done, I'm, I'm good with it. I think Mike, Mike and Phil need to come back and do their pitch. Yeah, I think just start with the two Coolidges, get rid of them, and then see what happens. Yep. What, what is that? What is everybody doing? I, I, I agree with Kevin. I don't think they do a whole lot to begin with. But. I, uh, honestly, I don't either. Don't get, I, like and, them, I like them both. I've known them for years. but and, and same here. I've known them both for a long time. But the fact of the matter is, is like, I, I know we can't uh, 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 do anything about it because Paul didn't get his CDL because he was tired before we put that provision in. But right. the same token, it's like the whole idea was that he was supposed to get it within a certain amount of time. And if he's failed the thing three times in less than a year and a half, then, I mean, what are the chances he's going to have that CDL by <laughs> 2022? Slim to none. Exactly. Well, so, could the lack of getting it be written up as a requirement or anything? I'm just wondering. I don't see why not. I know we could just get rid of them anyway, but. Well, can you go backwards? If we did reviews and actually said it's required and you don't get it, can't you But the thing I keep thinking, normally... going back to, though, is that, that there's so many folks out there that I've talked to that, that say that we're just 
too overstaffed for what we're doing. So why not be, you know, why not do what they're asking? Let's reduce staff. And then if it bites us and we realize that, hey, we needed those two folks, then we make changes accordingly. But at least we're doing what the community is outcrying. They're saying that we're too overstaffed. So we're doing something about it. We're going to reduce staff. And if we can prove that we needed those two folks, then we bring two folks back. You got your CDL? So what? I do. Super. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's going to come back from the ZPW, I would presume, after the cuts is they can't do the sidewalk. Um, I'm just saying, so I think we have to be prepared for an answer because that was the justification by them to bringing people on. And this this is where we put the honus on the, the two head cheeses to come up with a solution to that with reduced staff because that's what they're paid to do is, is make decisions accordingly and to make things happen with what they have to work with. Yep, I do it every day. It happens to me in my job every day. Yep. Who's lowest on the totem pole, Tanya? Is that Paul? Yes. Yeah. And then after Paul. that is, and then after that is Fred. Uh, is Fred. Yep. And yep. then we're looking at uh, potential of Kevin uh, Reese. And retiring. Kevin's going to retire in June. Ed, I see you raised your hand a couple times. What do you think, Bob? Uh, I don't really care what you guys do on that. My question was, what's our yes, gross revenue do. less our gross expenses? You put in a 1% tax increase right now for revenue. How much delta do we have currently right now? Given it's probably all... about 200,000. I haven't done all the formulas though. And in the general fund? $200,000 short, is that correct? Yeah, and I have to go back through. Yep, I'm all guessing right. that. So a 1% increase is only 13K. So you're yep. a 25% tax increase. All right, I'm good. <laughs> we get there. I look at them and found a bunch last year. So I, I yeah, we're in big ass trouble, folks. <laughs> we're in big trouble. Oh, Ed, you, I know that you say this, and we are. We're, it's not great, but the first year we did the budget, we were, I think, over five or six hundred thousand dollars away from, right. with our initial yes. budget. To where you know the revenue was so <clears throat> we'll make i it. would have kevin reese retire yeah. now i would get rid of these two guys and i would bring in phil and mike harder and give harder a thousand bucks to retire january 1st um it takes six months to retire when you put in the paperwork if you're depending what? on new york state income it well, takes he has all that vacation to take, right? Oh, yeah. I'm not disagreeing with any of it. I just know most of them that are talking about retiring are looking at putting their paperwork in this month for June. All right. And I'd also think about maybe taking one shift of our police department on weekdays from 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the morning when nobody basically gets arrested anyhow and save a man, maybe. I'm not opposed to that either. I mean, only, you know, not on weekends, not Saturday night, not Sunday night, and not hot, not Super Bowl weekend, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, it's like normal. You, we already have a statistic for when nobody gets arrested and call the sheriffs up if you need it at 3 a.m. in the morning. The mayor yeah, brings, up, mayor brings up a good mayor brings up a good point. You know that first 2017 or 18 uh, 19 budget that, we, that uh, most of us were a part of, we were 500 600 k off, and so adjustments many many adjustments are still yet to be made, and after those adjustments we made at that time, when the budget came in at the end of the fiscal year, we were pretty much dead on revenue and expenses. We were just hitting the numbers almost uh, almost to a T. And so I think that's what we'll do again. Yes, we got pandemic crap to deal with and we do we are heavy on the DPW. Uh, but again, Danny needs to get, we need to do some a whole host of more adjustments that will bring that 200 K down. So I agree. No, and no need to pull what, a fire alarm yet. 
No, Tanya seems to have the magic wand. Well, I don't need a pay raise. I can tell and, you that. And, so. and no, I'm not pushing to redo this right now. But this is this is the things we I think we need to think about. If we do have to make some look at that. And you just got ding 50k from uh, Summer Hill well, leaving how, too. What did, so. Tanya, what did you do to get us down to 143? I took off the um, Paul and Fred. Oh well, there you go. yeah, that'll do. And yeah. then I took yeah. off the FICA and Medicare. So see, uh, when we talk about changes, we can put them in that really fast. But and you wait, did have a one percent so, increase for revenue too, so. Well, wait. Yeah, is that I, that one forty three represents what with any raises or no raises? That's um, with one percent still. I haven't gone back because that will take me a while. Um, that I can do separate, and that will also affect the FICA and Medicare. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also look at zero, and I'd also look at like a three hundred total, like one time thing. So I'll run both. Um, I also have to put in money for the fire inspection fees to us. The whole 6000 we don't pay. I knew that was missing. Um, I also, a lot of the fees that we pay out to the fire inspector, actually, for instance, when they go to Brewster House the other day, Brewster House's fees go to the fire inspector. Yeah, it's past. So we only, it's what, Somebody agreed with with Cody, and that's kind of how we told them. That's how it's set up in civil service now. And we pay 15 an hour basically for trainings or any required meetings. So that whole 6,000 isn't. Um, I also have to adjust for the code. I know that's at least another 5,000 less, the code book. I just haven't pulled it out yet. So I know there's another 10 to 15,000 between those. And how much will we save when Kevin retires? Yeah, that's not in there. Um, I can do that. I didn't do that at all. Um, I left well, that's his gotta salary be half his salary, there. right? That's what yep. I was thinking. Yep. Yep. And technically you don't have to have even though it's nice to list like Carl as a sub coming in, you technically don't need to have a planned sub next year. You could just do regular subs or you could just do him. And he comes in on call in and not every every day. Well, yeah, I would say we that's all, yeah. So there's another place if we had to. Um, While we're training someone for the cemetery, we can have Ken or Joe stay at DPW and cover over there. And then you don't have to bring in Carl to two months later, or you don't have to bring in subs. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. So I could adjust things for that. And they're just told that for those eight weeks. So see, there's a whole bunch of things. I don't think I reduced for the water and sewers insurance either portion. I have to check that. In the general fund, I figured it out for the water and sewer. It's a lot of things are intricate between each other. So I go back, that's what I do after we get all the budgets. One of our biggest things we have to decide, though, is what we're doing with REC, too. Right. But we don't, um, really, we don't really know what we're doing with REC in right. general or what we're doing when it comes to Cortlandville. Cortlandville. We have to answer them for that contract one way or the other. I know we have to meet with Cortland first, but, like, that's something else. I presume they're not going to want to give more, but we could try doing that. 
<laughs> I'm under the impression that if we just stuck with Homer, town, and village, and everybody else, Truxton, Scott, Summerhill, Cortland, and Cortlandville, if they want to play sports in Homer, they pay da da da, and it's not ten dollars more. No, it's, it's got to be like a hundred dollars. But that's why, yeah, I'm. I and I don't meet, care if they play or not. Well, I got to meet with Mayor Tobin on that still, uh, because if I can get the city to agree to to that as well, then there's nowhere for them to go. But if the city doesn't agree, then they just all go to the city and play. Yeah, so, fine. Well, no, not really. And the less, if we do have less kids, then the expenses might be less. Well, yeah, but also the sports won't do as well. Less kids sign up. Yep. It, it's uh, it's not. Hey, I grew up. There wasn't any sports. I mean, you played at the, the school level. We all made it. You know. Blah blah blah. What's all? Why do we have to spend so much of our personal tax money from the village people to pay for other people so they have a nice sports? Why do we have to pay to plow the roads? Everybody ought to get a shovel and just. And I agree. You should have a part of the road and just. You've got a nice Ford truck and put a plow on it and uh, do it. Sure. Get them out there shoveling. Ed, I want you to shovel all of Warren by hand. I will do that. I got a (laughs) snowblower. We used to do that anyhow. Uh, sports is important, right, Tim? Yeah, just because you were a javelin catcher doesn't mean the rest of them. Having can. a rec program is one of the amenities that brings young yeah. families into the village. And, and I don't mind like having us pay for our, for our village kids. It's it make, it else makes else some families move here, Ed. It raises, I don't it mind paying for Homer raises. kids. Paying for Truxton in Cortland, in Cortlandville, I do mind. I'm for sports. Tim, what was your kids? What was your kids do without sports, Tim? Yeah, the, I, it's a big thing. Who said yeah, they wouldn't true. be without? You got Homer. We'll do it. Yeah. If yeah. Well, the other towns want to come. They got to pay. Every week. But they got to pay. Yeah, right they're, now, not, they're not going to pay. A, they're not going to pay a hundred bucks, Ed. Well, they mm-hmm. have to because that's what it costs. They won't to do pay it. if they can go to Cortland, and that's well. The then whole thing. fine. I've got to. I've got to work with them. We'll have a team that goes down and plays against Cortland. Simple as that. We won't have five teams. We'll have one called Homer. The taxpayers shouldn't. Given that COVID and we're screwing everybody else, why not? take care of our own kids and not worry about the Truxton kids and the Scott kids. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I'm saying that there's a way to do it with that. We don't absolutely blow up the entire rec program. I agree. And that's what the discussion was. And I'm, I'm all for that. If yeah, you can so we, got, we, we got to wait to see what Hal's magic can be with uh, the city of Portland before. We oh, I agree. Game. I want him to do that. <laughs> yeah. Ryan's pretty, uh, pretty uh, on board with a lot of things we do. I think that He's Al can very, talk to him and, and angry about this issue. He f- yeah, he, f- he feels a lot of the same way we do, but there's a amicable way we can get through this. I think so too. Yep. And then um Dan, um, I'm, it looks like most likely Summerhill isn't coming this way and changing. Oh, as far as the fire is concerned, Summerhill is saying screw it, they're going yeah. elsewhere? No, not necessarily. So uh, <laughs> I talked to Supervisor Ripley this, uh, this morning, explained the situation again. Uh, he asked if there was wiggle room. I said there is not. Um, I said I would be happy to explain the situation to the board again, um, but he's taking back the uh, all the information that he already knows and then what uh, I told him this morning, and he's going to go talk to the board. I told him if we do, if they continue to balk, that a certified letter uh, will be forthwith coming. That uh, service ends twelve thirty one. And Dan, when is their next meeting? Do you know? 
I think that, well, they, they had a meeting uh, just past Tuesday, uh, just like us. And they'd have they, to have a special meeting. Board, yeah, they would have to have some special meeting to approve if they're going to go. Okay, so, 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 so we just don't know any information yet from this meeting. Yeah, the new meeting, about, no. well, clearly if they've had a special meeting and they talked to Dan and they're still on the fence, they didn't make a decision, which also means they did not make a decision to absolutely go with another department. That they're board That's right. Yep. They literally made no decision. Okay. Yeah, Charlie called. Charlie called me too. I was on the phone with Scott on another thing, and um, then I saw they had called Dan, so I didn't have to call back. Yeah, the fact that they're calling tells me all we need to know. Yep, Dan, I love your forward, your straightforward approach, and I think that'll call their bluff, and I think they'll come our way. I really do. I think so. I think so. Yeah. No. Good. Good, good, good call. Can they actually build that out now, though? Because didn't they have to turn it into their assessor already? I don't know what they what they'll do. Yeah, because I think that's what happens. Like the town has to have their stuff in in time. Like we have to have our stuff approved two months ahead, yeah, right, well, or they, like a month ahead. Yeah. This well, they, why, they turn it in, and we, they, they got fifty thousand on the bot on the bottom line. They're just going to have to make an adjustment, won't they? And this is why we gave them the information in June or July. Yep. I mean, we gave it to them with so much time so that they could not say, well, we've already had our board meeting and decided what it would be. No, we gave it to you months ago. Yep. Yep. Because if that's the case, this goes down to 90s if we got that Oops. Should. then I have a whole bunch of other adjustments and we're pretty close just to throw that in there thank you and none of this includes the 10,000 for Cortland or any increased fees charged to kids from other residents because like I said we would have to do that every time we did sport and come up with it and then come back and adjust the first time. We just don't know what sports are even going to be held right now. Right. Well, what's what's our time frame and threshold right now for our answers that we need to have? We need to have them fairly soon, correct? Yeah. I think yep. we have till the end of the month for Cortlandville. Yeah. Yep. Um we got till the end of the month with Summer Hill because one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, and then we we have to have our final budget by what early January, January twenty, I think. We, know we try to do it the first and I'm sorry. Well, we can do it at the the back end of January at the at the second meeting, but if we're ready to go yeah. at the, at the top of January, we just go at the top. Yeah, it'd be nice to get it time for. So we we have a little bit of leeway here. Yeah. Yep. And I can put most of this in ahead and it's easy to run changes, um, whether it's in Excel or into our system, because we put both up online for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if we're 87,000 off right now, or even the 143, uh, we're still in better shape than we have been in the past at this point. Yeah. A lot better than last year. Yeah, and yeah, this considering the circumstances, how detrimental it is to us, um, this this is a testament to show that we're all making the correct decisions here. Yeah, this is way before any cuts to departments. I can tell you, I already told, I think, Pat it was, or somebody that I already knew of, 4,000, because I don't like contingencies in the budget. We always cut that from the fire. Yeah. Because um, you, you don't have money just to give them to do whatever they feel like right yeah, yeah exactly. we are the continuum. <laughs> yeah. yeah so that was my first cut in a department that was going to happen and yeah. i just was waiting for answers um you can go ahead and but that I'll, okay <laughs> i just was nice because they were all new and i didn't want to tell them right yeah, there we, we told them this last year we said we are the contingency yep. if something goes wrong you come to us you don't yeah. just do the flush thing. And we'll make the magic happen where it needs to happen. Right. right. Because otherwise, that's a flush thing. Yep. And then we'll just go through everything, too, because that 
a lot of times people put in their higher requests than after, which is why I went through all the personnel ones. I'll run, like I said, I'll run personnel at zero and then doing like a 300 bonus. Um, and that would be the first ones of March and just leaving it at that. Anything else can be looked at mid-year if we get a lot more sales tax. Um, and as we start hearing December's amount, we can also adjust that too. Right. Do we have another meeting to go over uh, like Little White Church and all that kind of stuff? Yep, that's actually on Tuesday. So yeah, I have uh, be doing all the projects. And that's where we would put in a little money maybe for comp plan and things like that that we keep saying we need yep. to do. Or we right. take it from our CDBG funds. Or yep. something, yeah. Okay, good. When's that? Yep. Tuesday. That's Tuesday. Tuesday. That's Tuesday. All right, good. Yep. Um, Hal, the LED lights was one o'clock. Okay. Oh, on the twenty first. Yeah. That's uh, well. Okay, wait. I'll email him. I think so. Did I, did I say I said it was wide open? Yeah, it's wide. Yes, open. you did. Wide yeah. open. <laughs> wide open. Okay. Wide open. I still was checking before, so I'm going to tell him good. Appreciate it. Is that an in-person meeting or is it a Zoom or? It's in person here at the Village Town Hall because um, there's papers Hal has to sign. Did you want anybody else there, Hal? No, it doesn't have nobody. It's just uh, I'm just I'm buying a whole bunch of streetlights. <laughs> okay, just just checking. Just checking. I'm gonna buy a bunch of streetlights. Just checking. I think everyone's welcome. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you I really want. Yeah. No mass. I gathering. just didn't know if you wanted support there or not. <laughs> Tim, if you want to come on by, come on by. All right. One o'clock on which day? Twenty first. Twenty first. Temple. Um, and just while I'm thinking about it real quick, Hal, that uh, that thing you had for us to sign up for the different things, could you please resend that to me? Yep. I'm uh, I don't know why, but I cannot find it for the life of me. It's okay. I just I need to make a few edits to it and then I will get it to you. It's on my list, but I was in a zoom. Temple, call I just don't want you to think I was shirking my duties. No, no, I, no, no, I got your message that said you, you needed me to resend it. I just I need to combine three into one and then send it to you. You've already you been at mine, correct? You've already been appointed, Tim. I got uh, uh, probably, but uh, <laughs> might as well at least see what I'm doing. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, um, I'm not upset in any way. I still have some open items from departments, so I'm going to keep trying to get those too. And at least then we have them for the decisions, um, even if they're estimates. So, like, I know like the fire station still hasn't given me the toilets at all. Uh -huh. um, and I don't know if I would approve 5,700 in painting without that. Cause if something else is mandatory, I would do that. Right. That would be a suggestion. I agree. So I'm going to keep calling that, them. I know um, Buzz told me the van cost around 54,000, but he like still wants to look around and hasn't started yet. And we're still missing quotes on um, roof repairs for the DPW and the um, water and sewer. So I don't have anything else. Anybody else? All right. Nope. Hal, I just need to discuss something with you offline. Okay. All right, Thank coach. Thank you. Bye. See you guys. Thank you.